Hi there, my name is Koen Verstrepen, I'm one of the founders of Frummel, and welcome to another episode of Value from AI. And today I have as guest Karel Bosmans. Hi Karel. Hi, cool. uh, Welcome. You are the e-commerce manager uh, of Schoen Taurus. Uh, what does that mean? As the e-commerce manager, I am responsible for uh, everything that goes on on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to know that Taurus is a one of the biggest or the biggest shoe retailer in Belgium. Uh, and we uh, try to have a full omnichannel approach. So. Um, one of my responsibilities is as well uh, to look at the website, but also to the web screens. So screens mm-hmm. in the shops where you can order uh, straight online out of okay. the online uh, stock um, and have them delivered at home or in uh, another shop, what, uh, whatever is uh, your liking. Mm-hmm. Next to that, we are uh, also um, uh, responsible on, of uh, putting the content live on the website. So planning everything together uh, with marketing to see that everything works out well, that campaigns are uh, brought on live uh, as soon as possible uh, or on time, whatever we decide what to do and where we want to do it. Is this visual content or is it really textual? Both actually. So uh, our team is uh, divided in two uh, parts. We have a a SEO part uh, where people do write the content on the brands that we uh, carry. Uh, We put live a lot of content um, on uh, campaigning. Uh, So um, what type of shoe is now hot, what type of colors and shoes is is trendy, those kind of things. Um, This is also a uh, co-op with marketing. Uh, They provide content and uh, trending and we write the text so that they are uh, SEO friendly. Uh, But also uh, every shoe that is on the website uh, has gone through um, part of my team's hands and uh, is uh, photographed uh, in the photo studio uh, 18 times uh, in order to have seven uh, straight up photos of the shoe itself uh, from different angles uh, and also a full 360 uh, view so that uh, people can have a very uh, evaluated choice when they buy a shoe. Okay, okay if you uh, if you make content, is the is the main goal of it to uh, to guide traffic to your website through Google, uh, through the search engine, or is it? Uh, it's both it actually. So there's there's two big ex- aspects of uh, of e-commerce. First of all, you need to have uh, traffic on your website, of course. But then the most important part is what to do when the traffic is there and how to get uh, most out of mm-hmm. that traffic, so the best conversion. Uh, so we we divided the team in in, in two instances. Um, So that's why we have a SEO and SEA approach to get people on Mm -hmm. the website. Uh, But next to that, there is uh, also a large part of the work is uh, done uh, to improve and drive uh, conversion simply. And that's where content comes into play, inspiration comes into play, uh, but also the platform. Uh, Last year we changed out the platform, Uh, we had a full custom uh, made platform Mm -hmm. that was very SEO friendly built um, on the standards of uh, seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as you know, Google evolves, um, how uh, people surf evolve, um, how they look for content, all those things evolve. Uh, Look at uh, where Facebook was seven years ago, where it is today, where Instagram was seven Mm -hmm. years ago, where it is today. So those things change. And uh, what we saw is that as a big retailer in Belgium, you're very small in the world and uh, you need to be sure that whatever uh, platform you choose or make, that you need to be competitive. And uh, what we saw is that um, our tailor-made platform was very efficient, but uh, we couldn't uh, adapt it enough and quick enough uh, to be able to respond to the trends uh, that are at hand. AI is one of them, one of the important ones, of course, but also um, how you um, go mobile, how you integrate chatbots, how you go multilingual, those things are very important for us. Okay. Uh, voice search, that's a big one as well. If you need to develop that uh, single-handedly, you know that there's a lot of um, learning money uh, to be paid, so uh, that's going to be uh, very difficult. If you see that big retailers like uh, Zalando, like Amazon, already are experimenting in English, Uh, so you need to know that on a local language uh, you're already running two, three years behind, so you need to be able to uh, get everything out of the insights of this one language in English, for instance, 
to uh, simply have a tra translation done and then have the algorithms uh, in place yeah. already that have been tested through Tor. Okay, interesting. Because you're, you're touching upon a very interesting topic, which is the different channels you can use yeah. for, for doing online commerce. And the website is, uh, or the desktop website is the most traditional one. I believe, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that mobile, the mobile website is also already very important, also in converting, or is that not true? That's one of the main reasons, uh, for example, that we saw um, there was a big change uh, on hand. Uh, what we saw in the last year, so 2018, we saw that um, during our TV campaigns, the radio campaigns, there was an enormous drive of uh, mobile traffic. Uh, there were moments where we had uh, almost 60% mobile traffic in, in comparison to tablet and desktop, uh, sometimes with even more uh, higher peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is typical, of course, people are uh, watching TV or uh, are on, uh, on their ways in, uh, in the car or something and, and they just quickly go to the website. But if you don't have a website that is able to convert that traffic into business into uh, yes. money, then you are losing out a lot. Okay. What we saw today is that uh, we have, uh, so there were two main goals being future proof for the new platform. So able to surf on all the development that's done by a big party, um, a big international party that has 3000 uh, websites that are uh, common in, uh, in retail and, and in big branding. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we saw is that uh, we, we chose for the, uh, the Salesforce platform where Adidas and Puma are also uh, using uh, the same platform. And uh, the second one was uh, being mobile uh, first in our thinking, in our doing, in our development. Okay. What we saw is that there was a um, major increase in, in traffic uh, during the first month of uh, 2019. This was the goal that we, during the sales period, were uh, present with a mobile first site and with a very stable site, a, a site that was able to capture all the traffic because we saw that in the last year uh, when it was really um, a lot of activity going on on the website, there was a big problem uh, at the, the tail end of, of this traffic. There mm -hmm. people started to see some problems with speed um, and, and uh, certainly on mobile this was uh, this was getting a, becoming a problem and uh, what we saw now is that there's a major shift in uh, in traffic uh, so the half of traffic in uh, January was mobile um, and the conversion rates have uh, bumped enormously mm -hmm. so we're almost on par with desktop uh, traffic uh, okay. conversion so okay. this is really good it's not there yet but uh, already we saw a major uh, increase in uh, conversion okay. which was uh, I noticed that you uh, mentioned voice already mm -hmm. um, I can see also chatbots yep. uh, which other channels are you thinking about that might be important in the future well, um, of course, uh, if you uh, so out of my uh, job as an e-commerce manager, I'm responsible for the photo studio. So what goes on there, how we um, go on about with how we propose the, um, the products, how we uh, put them on our website, how people interact with them. Uh, so one of the things that you see in, in, um, in trending is, is I think it's threefold. First of all, there's going to be a lot more video on hand within three, four years. A lot of uh, the stuff that's on websites is going to be uh, video or um, light video content. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing we're looking at, um, how to integrate that content so that it's uh, interactive, that it loads quickly and that it's uh, not uh, a problem when you're not on a, a Wi-Fi network or on a okay. 3G network, for instance. So that's one step. The second step is, of course, uh, if you Today we're present in Belgium and in Holland. If we would go into another region uh, of Europe, there's a, a language uh, issue, of course. So um, we would be, we are looking into how can a chatbot uh, and chat be, um, first of all, um, the first line interaction with a customer if he has questions. Okay. Um, so that we can alleviate the pressure on customer service, which is, uh, of course, peak demand and, and, and not peak demand, let's say. Uh, what we see is that during the sales period, there's 
those are peaks that you almost with a fixed team cannot solve. Mm -hmm. So there you could uh, have a, uh, a solution uh, with a chatbot. And um, first, this will be a chatbot with, uh, uh, the first step will be a chatbot with um, standardized questions with uh, quickly to be found uh, uh, questions and answers. Yes. Uh, one of the main questions that uh, comes up during this uh, high intensity period is uh, simply, uh, for instance, when is my uh, my order due at my home? Um, typically, people order three, four pairs of shoes, and one or two pairs of shoes are being fetched out of a, one of our 75 stores in Belgium, mm -hmm. which takes a few days more. Um, because we are a company that also is uh, trying to act responsibly uh, versus the environment, we do um, uh, keep all the separate items of your order on call until we have the complete order the ready so that we can ship yeah. it out in one time to, to, uh, to save CO2 okay. In, okay. in the environment. But there's of course a, a question people just order. They don't look uh, very uh, intensely to, to the order uh, or delivery dates, which we stipulate very yeah. quite clearly, but I'm they don't- I'm also a very uh, lazy guy. Yeah, they don't see it. And then things. one of the main questions is simply, when is my package uh, okay. going to be arriving at? I expected it yesterday. You know, those things are quite easy to, uh, to be, uh, to reply. To automate. To automate, yes. but, uh, uh, you can you can have the uh, because of course we do have this in your account where there's a uh, info on your order we do send you an update every time we do a next step in your account but yeah, people ignore it people <laughs> tend, tend to ignore tend it and of course during the sales period you have numbers of orders at all different parties so yeah. uh, it's it's kind of messes up your inbox a bit um, but these are simple questions that also are available in the fact but Typically, people do not read on yes. the website. They do, uh, and then you see that uh, what's happening. Okay. You know, what's going if on you there. talk about chatbots in this context, it's about customer care, about yep. uh, frequently yep. asked questions. Do you also see an opportunity for actually selling ch shoes through chatbots, yes, where you tell a chatbot, yeah. "Hey, uh, I like a pair of shoes, or I, I need sneakers, or uh, yep. I need winter boots," yep. uh, and then you go through a process where actually the right sneakers come up, or at least uh, through some process. Mm -hmm. Is that do you see an opportunity there or do you say, well, I don't see that happening? Well, absolutely, we see. Uh, so there are a few brands already. Um, if you look at the website of the North Face, the North Face, uh, which is a typical example of how they, uh, through questions and answers and AI, uh, they propose you a set of codes, uh, winter codes, ski codes, uh, trekking codes, uh, where you can um, uh, easily find uh, your choice and the right application okay. of the right materials that are uh, technical materials uh, that are for your trip that you are planning uh, the perfect ones. Okay. Uh, so that's those are the uh, you see that there are some uh, companies that are already innovative on that uh, part. Uh, of course, again, it's an English-based uh, version. So we are starting off with a chatbot that's going to be simple straight uh, questions with straight answers where you are going to find all the different uh, mm -hmm. types of answers that are actually meaningless. Where yeah. is my order? When is my package due? Those things are going to be uh, uh, put together so that we always have the right answer. Okay. Next phase is going to be a um, interactive robot uh, or, or chatbot that's going to uh, simply semantically analyze your question and, and, and looking into the database. What do I have on hand to be able to reply? Uh, and the next phase is simply going to be uh, what type of shoe uh, are you looking for? Is it for a special occasion? Do we have certain uh, preferences? So to narrow down the um, okay. uh, the choice and to narrow down the uh, the proposition you are going to make to the customer yes. and increasing thus uh, your uh, your conversion. Uh, you also men mentioned voice. Is that something? Uh, I, of course. How do yeah. you see the evolution? I can imagine myself saying, hey, Alexa, order new toilet paper. Yes. Yeah. But I'm not, I, I think I'm not going to say, Alexa, buy me a pair of shoes because mm. yeah. that's something that's not that's not a commodity mm. like like toilet paper. It's no. What's your vision? On, well, on, it's um, uh, so I, we are experimenting, of course, uh, several people uh, within Torfs have uh, Alexa and Google uh, at home to try it, try it out to see how it functions. Uh, it's typical um, uh, once you pass beyond the, the gimmicks of uh, what's the weather like and how warm is it outside, that kind of stuff, uh, you quickly uh, enter into the, the problems that are there on, on uh, uh, that I, for the moment, are there in this emerging uh, type of interaction, uh, certainly online. Um, I think, um, yeah. 
how you interact with this uh, Alexa or Google depends largely on uh, getting to know it, uh, being specific in your question. There's a lot of uh, content or context uh, that people, when they interact, is already clear mm -hmm. uh, where you are, uh, what uh, what history you have between you. That's kind of difficult with this uh, AI and this voice. Um, so ordering paper or toilet paper is quite easy. Ordering shoes, you're going to start to have to have a small interaction or define your question uh, beforehand. I think today it's kind of early. I think certainly within one, two, three years, this is going to be less of a problem. And of course, AI is going to play a major part in that one. Um, what we see today is that our website is already uh, there's an AI bot present that is going to analyze your history of ordering and is going to take that into account in um, your search that you're doing. If you, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, type in sneakers and in your history, you see that there's a, um, you always order Nike shoes. We are not going to propose another one. We could do that in the lower regions of the proposition, but in the first regions of the proposition, we will probably, in order yes. to increase conversion, uh, give you a, a Nike a shoe mm -hmm. um, um, as, as, uh, to consider to buy. But of course, um, this will evolve. And uh, all this, uh, this um, uh, AI and the information they have uh, on you will improve, of course, your, uh, okay. uh, your interaction and your conversion. Yeah, um, makes sense. You are, as e-commerce manager, responsible for both, let's say, the online channels, but also the screens the in your brick and mortar stores. Yeah. Are both exactly the same, or do they uh, do they need a different approach? I'm very curious well, how they match and where they differ. We actually have uh, experience in both uh, of these approaches. Uh, for the moment, for the time being, they are um, uh, completely uh, equal. So uh, it's the same inventory that's on there. It's the same um, uh, homepage, the same inspiration pages. Um, but we are uh, we come from uh, early in the beginning. We had a completely designed touch-based. Uh, layer on top of the website and on top of this inventory that's in there, um, which made interaction quite easy. Um, so we have experience in both and probably we are going to work towards a hybrid in the near future where we are going to improve the tactile part of these screens um, uh, so that uh, surfing through these screens, which is quite different, is going to be um, uh, made a little bit more easy, okay. uh, which gives you a secondary uh, advantage because we what we see is that uh, Torres has quite a few fanboys on tablet, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite high compared to other um, comparable industries. Okay. Uh, so that could be a plus because what we do there on these tactile screens, on these web screens, is actually uh, going to benefit uh, tablet users as well. Okay, okay. The screens in your stores, are they important? They are very important. Um, first of all, um, they are very important to uh, have a broader uh, inventory that we can carry in the shops. Uh, as you know, in retail, you need to uh, grade your shops uh, in part of uh, available uh, mm -hmm. space, of course. Uh, square meters are not always the same. Uh, in You need to grade them as well in part of the um, uh, where they are localized, which is uh, can be quite different. Tastes differ uh, throughout even a small country as Belgium. Um, so we, we need to take those things into account when we stock a store physically. Um, if, for, uh, for instance, a customer comes uh, through the shop and he is looking for something in particular, uh, which we do not carry in that shop, these screens uh, avoid having a lost sale, having a uh, visit to the store that uh, is generating no sale and uh, no satisfaction with the customer. Mm -hmm. If you have a sale and you are happy that you can buy something uh, and have it delivered the next day even, uh, at your home, it's not for nothing that you went to the store. Okay. We can carry, uh, so we can carry more. There's all other things that we, that we can consider. For instance, if the weather turns very rapidly and we start changing uh, the inventory in the shop from summer to winter, for instance, and you have this, uh, um, all of a sudden there's a, a, a month coming, uh, September, October, where there's uh, abnormal high temperatures, we can still sell a lot of 
the uh, summer content or summer inventory that we do not carry anymore in the shops because yes. we are already preparing for winter. Okay. So those are uh, actually buffering out uh, some uh, some annoying so these, effects. Uh, these in greens retail. might be one of the ways to have a great harmony, a great marriage between brick and mortar. And absolutely, uh, these are uh, these are really our bread and butter in the shops, <coughs> and also uh, generate a lot of um, uh, turnover uh, extra for the website yes. as well. What we one of the specific things and which is really important at Torx is that the uh, the um, uh, the turnover that's generated on these screens is actually not a uh, turnover that comes into the e-commerce channel. So it's not my turnover; it's a turnover of the shops. Why do we do that? Because we want to have an omnichannel, a marriage between these screens and the shop, mm -hmm. uh, and we do not want competition on the shop floor between e-commerce or the yes. the website and uh, the shop. So okay. actually, that way, people are very tempted. Uh, to uh, quickly go to the web sh uh, uh, screens to be able to order uh, to sell more or to sell something that way. Okay. What is your vision on brick and mortar? Is it going to stay the same as it is today or is it going to evolve in a certain well, direction? Uh, there's a lot of um, discussions, uh, planning, analy analysis going on, uh, has always been going on at Torfs. Um, we are one of the strongest uh, retailers. We are also in this very difficult environment where there is a Zalando and Amazon. We do uh, keep our uh, our targets and we, we do uh, are able to grow uh, still in retail. So this is very important for us as well because we still in the basis are a retailer, of course. Um, and what we see there is that um, uh, it, I, it may be an open door, but um, inspiring the customer, having, making sure that when he comes to the store, he has a lovely experience, he's been uh, talked to in a friendly and, uh, and welcoming way uh, through the staff, and he's serviced as good as it uh, can be, then you see that people will be coming back, will be buying more and will be becoming a fan of your, uh, of your store and your brand. And I think if you work it uh, out right and you keep uh, hammering on that same nail all the time, you can still make a fist uh, against all these big international internet uh, companies that are trying to hammer down uh, on these uh, local markets. But of course, if you don't have everything, um, uh, all your ducks in a row on the retail part, you're going to suffer. That's quite clear. So okay. what you see is that now today uh, we saw that we have uh, with our new concept in, uh, at Torres in the retail, we see that we have very um, promising figures where we still have a huge increase in, uh, in turnover per store. Um, once we have uh, redone and uh, refurbished these stores and introduced a new concept. Uh, so that's why we decided this year to have a major effort and, and uh, move up a few of the, the refurbishments of the store uh, so that we can uh, grow even faster and uh, make uh, a better impression on the customers and okay. uh, have a better experience. Okay. I think you're still also growing a lot in e-commerce. Absolutely. Uh, so it's probably every year it's a bigger, a bigger share of your yep. revenue. Uh, so I'm wondering where does it stop? Where or, or will it stop? Uh, so so do, you, do you see some natural ceiling for the share that e-commerce can take? Well, that's looking to the future, which is quite uh, turbulent, let's say. Uh, yes. you, you never know uh, if you would be saying that uh, 10 years ago when they would say yeah, 5% is probably... Uh, so uh, today, uh, a normal uh, e-commerce slash retailer, they say 2080 is a normal uh, uh, comparison. I can tell you that uh, Torres is already pushing those boundaries. Uh, so we're already almost on that level. Uh, so I think, uh, is it going to be 50-50 in a few years' time? Oh, it depends on how people's uh, habits will change and okay. how e-commerce will evolve. Because, of course, what we see uh, in the near future is that e-commerce is, is going to have a few... Uh, uh, problems of its own, uh, mm -hmm. like peak demand, like uh, how, how do you environmentally friendly be, uh, are you going to deliver on an environmentally friendly way, for mm -hmm. instance, those things are going to play a part and, and those are also going to be uh, things you need to consider when, uh, okay. when uh, estimating growth. Of course, what we see is that um, the, uh, you can grow internationally, you need to do that in a sane and um, an intelligent way. And that could mean that for Torres, for instance, if once we go, uh, what we see growing, uh, what, when we now see our growth in, uh, in Holland, for instance, which is leaping forward, uh, you can see that where we do not have shops, 
we could have a considerable increase in, in turnover, which could balance this even further out between the 2080 okay. uh, mark, okay. of course. Is it possible to have a very profitable business from e-commerce? Because a lot of a lot of feedback you got or, or I got the last years was, well, Zalando, Amazon, all these pure players, which are very large, they are now buying market share. So they are mm -hmm. investing, pumping in lots of money to get market share, but actually they are losing money every year mm -hmm. uh, and it will, it will stop and they will go bust. I think at this point, uh, they are, uh, it's turning. They are still struggling, I think, but they are showing that they are go going in the right direction. What is your vision on, on the profitability of e-commerce? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, looking back, uh, maybe taking a, a step back and looking at uh, the big uh, two budding heads uh, like Amazon and uh, Alibaba. Uh, of course, everybody is uh, looking at the, this big threat coming uh, at them. Uh, you need to look at it uh, in a different way, I think. Uh, don't panic, never panic. It's not good uh, taking decisions when you're panicking. Uh, secondly, I think uh, you need to understand these companies also have their own problems. Uh, look at the problems with Amazon in New York, where they wanted to have a second HQ. It got uh, butted out because the people didn't want to, to have a second HQ. And certainly the people of New York didn't want it there. Um, if you look at Amazon and Alibaba on, on a competition uh, level, it's not all uh, uh, very easy uh, and, and they don't have it easy uh, either way. Uh, so they are going to fight each other on, on certain uh, levels. It's going to be very tough for Amazon to get a foothold in China. I think the other way around, Alibaba is going to have a difficult time in uh, the US. So it's, it's, they all have their own uh, troubles. troubles and, and uh, ways that are not going optimal for them. Of course, you need to consider um, that these guys are here. And if you look at Amazon, they make their profit out of the uh, services they offer, uh, like uh, online storage and cloud and all those kinds of st things. On the other hand, uh, their business, it's a scale business. Uh, they need to have a certain scale and they might be, both of them, uh, at the tipping point of, uh, of becoming a profitable business. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at uh, the, the, one, the big one, uh, the, the elephant in the room in Europe, being Zalando, for instance, what you can see is that they also have difficulty becoming a profitable business. Mm -hmm. Are they going to ba go bankrupt? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, it's a big company. There's a lot of money behind that. They do have uh, show, uh, shown commitment uh, all along. Uh, but what you see is that they are going to have to uh, change their proposition towards the customers. Uh, if you look at that, um, there's now tests being done in Italy where they are charging you for uh, shipping. Uh, what you see is in certain countries where they have difficulty with um, the returning goods which are, have been uh, worn or which are torn or even uh, mm -hmm. not sellable anymore. Uh, you see that uh, they are now experimenting with big badges that you cannot wear yes. this and, and, and send it back, for instance. So That's uh, a very interesting one, the, the returning of, of, yeah. of, of items, because I, I, I cannot remember the exact figure anymore. But I can I, tell you if you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very, it was like 20, 30 percent of all orders that were returned. Is, yeah. is it that large? It's even, uh, it's even more. If you standard retail, uh, no, sorry, standard fashion, uh, returning rates are uh, at the 40 percent mark. 40 percent. Zero. So uh, wow. you need to you need to take that into account. It can even differ in between countries. So, uh, for instance, in Germany, people are bigger, larger. Uh, the sizes are different as well. So it's kind of more difficult <coughs> to have a perfect fit fit of your uh, what you're buying. Um, those things are also playing a part in that. Of course, uh, people do tend to order a lot of stuff and send uh, in uh, two or three uh, sizes in a row, uh, is, and they send uh, they that send the one. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. Uh, but I can tell you uh, that's the standard. Um, we know for a fact that during the sales period, Zalando has a 60% plus return rate. Even so, that um, uh, distribu uh, the, the logistic partners they use, which are the same as uh, ours here in Belgium, are uh, having trouble uh, getting all that stuff back on time so that they can uh, 
okay. return it back into the sellable inventory. So you have people who will actually, let's say, rigging the system, uh, wearing something one Those time. Those are customer right? habits. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, you can you can try to avoid it, but mm -hmm. it's, you cannot fix that fundamentally, or, or it will be difficult. Then you have people just buying one thing in three sizes, and then taking the, si yep. the right size, knowing they in advance they will send back two of the three. Yep. Uh, are those the two big groups or are there also other, reason, other reasons people return a lot of... I think those are the two main reasons and uh, of course there's availability uh, could be one of them. If you have a low stock of something, people do tend to order that and have it shipped to them so that they are sure they can in all ease oh, okay. and in all time they, ha they can take within the 14 days return, right? Yes. Uh, that they can have a, an easy fit and, uh, and, and, and are not afraid to miss out on what they would like to okay. buy. So those are uh, all the common. Of course, there are some uh, items uh, uh, know that, for instance, a shoe size is not a shoe size. It's uh, for <laughs> some brands, it's, uh, it differs. Yeah. Uh, there are brands where you order a 42 and actually it's a 40 and a half. Uh, but they name it a 42. We, even within a brand, there are different sizes, uh, so that's kind of difficult. And there, there are, um, that's only in the shoes. So imagine all the different sizes uh, of your, your body and clothing. Yeah. Uh, there's even more uh, difficulty to have a perfect fit. So that's something where there's uh, a lot of looking around, a lot of analysis going yeah. on and trying, even with AI, trying to propose something that's better fitting than... Yeah, I uh, went shopping a few days ago, or a few weeks ago even, and I had I was an emotional roller coaster because I bought both a medium, which was very nice, and extra large, <laughs> which yeah, was well, not so yeah, nice. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. so, so that I, can be a problem. Uh, but of course, I, if you there, there's uh, there's uh, if you want to service your customer right, you could, for instance, actually when somebody orders a 41 out of a certain shoe, and you know that this shoe for his uh, scant foot, which is already possible is not the perfect match. You could actually suggest him, listen, we know that you like this shoe. We have a similar shoe, also a white, completely white sneaker of another brand, but it's low level branded. Both of them are, and this will fit you way more to your type of foot than the one you are actually looking at for the moment to mm -hmm. buy. Okay. This is so life changing as an experience for a customer that next time he's just a fan of your brand and he will trust you fully. And, and it's all about trust in, uh, okay. in online business as well. Okay. You were mentioning that one of the keys to success in brick and mortar is to give really good experience, to be very friendly to consumers, Absolutely. to give them a time of their life. Uh, that's maybe a little exaggerated, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but right. to give it your best when they are <laughs> yeah, in your shop. Absolutely. Uh, how can you translate that to the online channels? Well, it's um, uh, taking out the friction is one of them, uh, of course. There, I, people do tend to understand that when they go to a website, there's not somebody that's going to be next to you or asking you some questions or that kind of things. Uh, but you need to find a way that, first of all, eliminates friction. That eliminates the friction in your search, in uh, finding the right uh, information on this shoe, uh, finding the right pictures, seeing this shoe completely uh, from all angles and knowing, yeah, this is the one I want. So that you can avoid having the wrong choice being delivered at your doorstep. Um, the next part of the friction is, of course, the delivery. Um, we are looking into sustainable delivery, into quick delivery, into even uh, delivery at your call. So when you want to be delivered, uh, when you are at home, for instance, those things are all uh, in our consideration. Uh, a lot of them are already uh, at hand on our website, but we st still are thinking further and further. We are even considering uh, same day delivery if you go and fetch it at your stop on your way home. For instance, that we already uh, mm -hmm. have it in place so that you can just pull it out of the wall, for instance, yeah. uh, on your way home. Those are uh, eliminating the friction parts. When something goes wrong, and it does go wrong, of course, there is the wrong size uh, because it doesn't uh, perfectly fit you. Or um, we do have uh, a screen in between the product and the, and the user. When it goes wrong, uh, I think one of the main things is our customer service. If people try to reach us by whatever channel they try to reach us, we do react. 
If they ask us a question on Google My Business, we will react as quickly as possible. If it's through customer service on the phone, on the mail or to chat, we will find a solution for this customer. Um, we do not discuss uh, uh, anything uh, the customer asks us. We just do and try to give okay. them the best service. And that's why Torfs, for instance, has been the, um, elected the, uh, the best web shop overall for Belgium uh, this year. So we're okay. very proud of that as well. And being individually, being relevant to an individual uh, consumer, personalizing for that consumer, making the search for the perfect fashionable shoe for me, uh, easier? Is that an important part of the Of course, that's an important service? part, uh, but uh, all the things you are now referring to are of course uh, subject to uh, the new legislation that's uh, here on privacy. How much uh, privacy do you want? And, you want uh, and how much privacy do you want to give up in order to be serviced better? And I think today, uh, and I'm pretty sure that in the next few years this is going to change, of course, people want and, and they, they have the full right to have their right of privacy. Um, but there is another part of that medal and that is um, what do you want a company you can trust to know about you, about your shopping habits, in order that you can have a better proposition of a, of a type okay. of shoe or everything. So, and that's going to be the balance in the next few years. And um, there is, um, we need GDPR because otherwise you, your uh, privacy is not protected. But I think uh, what of the, the, the main uh, effort you're going to have to do in the next few years is going to build that trust with your customer. Okay. Once you have trust, they will easily give up uh, a little bit of information or be quite happy to share their uh, uh, buying uh, history with you, what they bought at your place, um, uh, at your brand, uh, so that you can give them a way better recommendation. So, okay. and that deepens the bond between the brand and the customer. But again, everything is built on that trust, trust. bond, and that's really important. Okay. Is it correct that you don't have native apps on, on iPhone and Android? No, we don't have native apps yet. Um, uh, we're looking into that. Um, but we are not sure that it's going to be an extension of what we have on uh, on the website. Yes. So it could be well uh, be something different, uh, where we of course make it an extension of what we do, uh, but not be a copy of what we do. So that's okay. uh, that's going to be the balance. If you look at the um, how uh, in the last few years uh, having a dedicated app. First of all, having to build it, maintain it and everything and then being able to um, go over all the, uh, the both uh, iOS and Android uh, updates that mm -hmm. are there. Uh, it's quite a capital intensive activity mm -hmm. um, and uh, you need to estimate well what the investments are versus the, the benefits we take out of it. Okay. If you compare that to all the possibilities that are there today on a mobile website already, uh, for example, visible search is going to be one of the main features of this year on our uh, website. Um, those are already possible on a visible uh, on a mobile website. You needed a uh, an app in the in the past for that. You for couldn't that, do yeah. that on a mobile website. Okay. So technology is evolving all the time. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, first movers advantage is always there. But also, given the uh, the amount of investments mm -hmm. and uh, the pace of um, of innovation, that sometimes is it uh, quite important as well to really estimate well where everything is going and how does it add on to uh, add value onto your yes. proposition towards the customer and not be the one that moves in all to the these directions uh, by the way there's a new uh, a new uh, kid in town called opti channel instead of omni channel yes. this opti channel says take a channel that f suits you best and and optimize the hell out of it and don't try to be everywhere all the time because there you'll, in all these different channels, okay. you'll probably have a subpar solution in all these channels, which uh, makes you uh, quite vulnerable for uh, competition. Okay, so it says like, choose your channel, that channel is connected to a certain segment of the market. Yep. Be happy with the fact that it kind of defines your customers if you use that channel, but yeah. do that very, very... Do that very, very well. And those okay. are, uh, those are uh, I think, uh, it's quite... Uh, 
a quite a way to go. Uh, you can see that, for instance, in uh, in Holland, there are some. Uh, um, uh, so you have uh, food retail where you can have your basket ready, and you just need to put it in the trunk of your car mm -hmm. and you drive home. Uh, well, there's a there's a player in uh, in Holland uh, that only uses his. Um, uh, a mobile app. They, they have a website where you, you can simply download the mobile app, that's it. They, do, they have a one-pager, that's it. Uh, but they optimized everything out of this mobile app and the connection uh, between their deliverers and the mobile uh, phone they have on them at that moment. They will give you uh, a few days in advance uh, an, a time slot within the hour. Okay. Um, the, the morning in advance they give you a time slot half an hour. Uh, and they will um, send you uh, 10 minutes in advance that they are uh, going to be there within 10 minutes. Uh, they even go as far as uh, knowing that when you have kids and they're, it's after 8 or 9 o'clock, they, they, they provide you with a sticker uh, and after a few times they know they don't have to ring the doorbell but they simply uh, okay. knock silently. So that's optimizing the hell out of this uh, oh, one, one approach and one channel. Okay, but it probably also has its limits because you, for example, you have the online channel, but also the brick and mortar stores. Yep. So Which is also where we optimize everything out of. So we have these web screens that are, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that are there and that are uh, working um, in conjunction with the online stock and the, the shop that uh, tries to expand on what they have okay. on hand. Um, so that's an optimization and that works very well for us. So okay. uh, that's, that's uh, actually all what uh, OptiChannel is all about. Okay, so to close uh, our conversation, uh, one final question. What is your biggest challenge at this moment? Uh, oh. I think um, we are quite happy with our mobile first, with our new platform. Uh, I think one of the main reasons is going to be expansion internationally, probably. Okay. Thanks a lot for the conversation, Carol. You're welcome. Uh, I had a very interesting time. Me too. Uh, I hope our viewers also uh, enjoyed it. Um, if you want to know more, stay tuned. And I would say uh, have a nice time. Bye. Bye.